We're in a time when the economy is struggling. We hear a lot about retailers finding difficulty in the market, uh, customers cutting back. And yet, John Lewis and Waitrose are beating the market, outperforming. As the economy turned down, how many commentators said, Waitrose is really going to suffer? As people tighten their belts, Waitrose will suffer. Just the opposite. Waitrose continues to grow its market share. This is because it is a different kind of business that's well grounded and commentators are having to say, what is it about these businesses that is making them outperform even in these difficult market conditions? At John Lewis, ownership is real. 65,000 people actually do own, through a trust, the business. No outside shareholders. Now, that's going to be very unusual. And I'm not advocating to Andy that we should have res re revolution at RSA, throw out the shareholders, uh, and, and let's make this an employee-owned business. That's not practical. It's not going to happen. But profit sharing, I see, is really the icing on the cake. Employee engagement at John Lewis and anywhere else is actually about a different way of thinking. But when we set this up, we said, well, if somebody does not live by those values and in their behavior demonstrate those values, we don't want him in the business. No matter how good he is commercially, whether he's making money for us or not, if he's not true to that, he doesn't have a place in the business. We developed the principle at John Lewis that you recruit for attitude and train for skills because you really can't train attitude. And it's the attitude which is the winning factor in the business. One journalist uh, was writing about Waitrose and said, Waitrose doesn't have customers, it has a congregation. And it is that sense of engaging your customers uh, so that they feel that they are part of your business, they share the values which you have, and that is far more powerful than that nasty plastic card that many of you indicated you have. If you can get your customers to feel that they are part of you, that, that they really do identify. My point, loyal staff equals loyal customers, is absolutely there. And if we can give an example, again, a customer wrote to me, she was an American lady, uh, uh, went into Peter Jones, uh, wanted a washing machine, and went up to the sales system and said, uh, I want a Mealy washing machine. And the guy started showing her the Mealy washing machine. He said, now, just a minute, why did you want a Mealy? And she said, well, it's the best. And he said, yeah, sure, it's the best. But where are you going to put it? Is it in your kitchen or have you got it in a utility room? And she said, well, it's actually in a utility room. He said, well, you don't need the Mealy. The Mealy is fantastic. It's really quiet. And if it's going to be somewhere where you're going to be working or eating, um, then it's worth having it. But if it's in another room, why don't you get this other one, which is exactly the same internal works, but it's a bit noisier, and it's a couple of hundred pounds cheaper. And this American lady said to me, I have never had somebody say to me, why don't you buy something that's 200 pounds cheaper? She said, from now on, I'm going to do all my shopping at Peter Jones. And your debate about discounting, what do you want to have? Do you want to win a transaction by an offer? Do you want to have somebody who's commission-oriented and therefore they want to sell the most expensive thing? That transaction might be fine, but surely you're much more interested in winning customers for life who are going to continue to build your business. Making money 
and creating happiness are not a contradiction. John Lewis demonstrates that. Brilliant customer service, not as a theme for a year, but as a means of sustained competitive advantage, starts with a belief in what the company is and what the company stands for. It's the way forward, I am sure, for RSA. You've just got to make it happen. Thank you very much.